Hey kiddos, it's Mrs. Croft again. I'm so excited about our math lesson today. We are on module seven, lesson five. And today we are solving word problems using data in a bar graph. Our vocabulary today has to do with graphs. So here's a picture of the parts of a graph. The title is right up at the top, usually, of your graph. The title is the name of the items the graph shows. And this one says our pets because they are counting pets. Data. Data are the amounts of items represented in your graph. So over here, the data is shown as one, two, three, four, five, six. Labels. They are words representing categories of items, and the categories down here are cat, fish, pig, and dog. So those are the different pets that people had, and then they counted them, and they colored up. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Okay, our learning intention today is I can use a table to represent and answer questions about data in a graph. I know I have it when I can show data from a table as shaded bars like those we just saw. I can title and label that graph correctly and I can observe that graph and answer questions that have to do with it. Here are tables and graphs, okay? So this part right here is your table. We talked about that in another lesson. Pennies saved. So on Saturday, this many pennies were saved. On Sunday, 10 pennies were saved. Monday, four pennies were saved. And Tuesday, seven pennies were saved. Remember doing tally marks? The tally marks here are changed into digits, 15, 10, four, and seven. But they represent the number of pennies that were saved. So the data is recorded in a table, and then we take that and we put it into the graph. To make this graph, we are going to read the instructions at the top. Callista saved pennies. Use the table, this is your table, to complete the bar graph. Then answer the following questions. And our questions are on the next page. So here's a graph. It has a bunch of different rectangles. It has some data up the side. And it has blanks at the bottom and blanks at the top. Now, don't forget to fill in these blanks because remember our learning intention? Yes, it was to create a title and put labels. So down here at the bottom are our labels. The labels are going to be our days. So if I was to write it in, I would put Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Or you could put it in order, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and then Saturday at the end. Up here at the top, where it says title, your titles is gonna be Penny Saved, which is the same title that is up here in your table. So. All you have to do is take the title of the table and put it as the title of your graph because the data that we're gonna show in our graph is the same thing. That's right, it's penny saved. So then after you put Saturday down here, you are going to show using these numbers how many people saved or how many pennies were saved. So you're gonna start out one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way up to 15, because Saturday there were 15 pennies saved. So you would just shade in each one of these boxes all the way to the top to represent 15, okay? So when we read a bar graph, it looks a little bit different because it has all the shading in. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Okay, if you were to answer questions about that graph, A says, how many pennies did Callista save in all? Well. The thing with this is, is we'd have to see the graph too. So we're not actually gonna answer these questions, but these questions are just like the ones that you will have on your sheet that you do today. So if I look at this question, and these are word problems, so there's some keywords that we can look and find in this sentence, in this statement, that help us um, figure out what to do. So what words do you see that can help you figure out what to do? How many pennies did Callista save in all? Hmm. Do you see it? I see it too. It's right here. In all. In all, 
all together. That's right. So all together means to add. That's right. Good job. So we would go back to the graph and look at it. How many did she save in all? Well, all of these days would be what you would add together. And you would take and look at the graph if you didn't have the table. And you would add 15 plus 10 plus 4 plus 7. And then you would have how many pennies for your answer in A that she saved in all. Okay. B. Her sister saved 18 fewer pennies. Whoa, wait a minute. It doesn't even tell us about her sister in that graph, does it? Hmm, I don't see her sister's name at all. So how are we going to find out how many pennies did her sister save? Let's look at that statement again. Her sister saved 18 fewer pennies. How many pennies did her sister save? Let's think about it. Yeah, I know. We could take the number that Callista saved and count 18 fewer. That's right. Is fewer going to be a bigger number or a smaller number? That's right. It's a smaller number. How many pennies did her sister save? And then you would have your answer. So if we are finding a smaller number, are we going to add or subtract? That's right, we are going to subtract because we have the number Callista saved up here and 18 fewer, we are going to take that number minus, that's right, 18 to find how many her sister had. So sometimes the information isn't in the bar graph or the other kind of graph that you're using, but you can watch your keywords and find out how to find that information by using the answers that you already completed. Good job, all right, C. How much more money, there's a key, did Callista save on Saturday than on Monday and Tuesday? Oh my goodness, don't miss that word and, I'm going to highlight it really good. <laughs> if you miss that word and, there's going to be a problem because it says how much more money did Callista save, how much more on Saturday, then Monday and Tuesday. So you have two days you have to put together. Be careful, watch those words, and always read it how many times? That's right, twice, read it twice. How will the data change if Callista doubles the amount of money she saved on Sunday? Hmm, so if we changed Sunday back here on our graph, Sunday was 10. Ooh, look, we can color it in too. If this one was Saturday and this one was Sunday, and I'm going to put a U there so we know. Maybe I should use a pen. That would be a lot easier. Woo! Okay, so if we put Sunday here and we colored it in, shaded it in all the way up, we're stopping at where? 10, that's right. So what if we doubled it? If we doubled Sunday like it told us to, how would that change our data? Well, that's right. 10 doubled is 10, 20. So if we doubled that, it would be off the graph, first of all. Second of all, it would change all of our data by how much? By 10, that's right. Okay, so you would explain that right here on this line. E says, write a comparison statement that can be answered using the data on the bar graph. So again, you would go back to your bar graph and you would say, okay, what two days do I want to compare? Or what things do I want to compare? You could compare Mondays to Tuesdays, Saturdays to Mondays, or you could even go a little bit farther because you can always do more, never do less, okay? You could do how much more did she save on Saturday and Sunday compared to Monday and Tuesday? Hmm, that would be a hard problem. That would be a three-step problem. So you would write your comparison question here for whatever you want. Okay, that's a lot, I know, and we're gonna do our math joke in just a minute. So to make a bar graph, bar graphs are shaded in, 
using data, creating a title and a label or labels at the bottom, shading in the number that you have from your table and using that to answer some questions. So you're always making a graph for a purpose. It's to help us understand things and help us visualize because sometimes that makes it a little bit easier if we see it, which is why we read it, we write it, and we draw it, right? So this is kind of the same thing. So you are going to do your problem set, your exit ticket, and you're gonna do the topic A quiz. So have fun with your lessons. Remember to keep them, take a picture of them, put them in Seesaw, share them with your teacher when you go to class, and have a great week. But before we go, let's do a math joke. What are 10 things you can always count on? Your fingers. <laughs> you can always count on your teachers too. We love you. We thank you for coming and watching your lesson. And we're so excited for you to learn new things. So have a great week and we'll see you next time.